It's time for new product introductions brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Hi, on MPI. All right, Lady Ada, what is the MPI of the week? Hello, and welcome to on MPI. Uh, this time we're going to do NPI in the sky because we're going to check out uh, this cool new development application board from Ublox. Yay, Ublox, our favorite GPS and cell phone module maker. Uh, they make some good stuff. And one of the things that um, they've been experts at for like 20 years is GPS modules. They're really good at them. But today we're going to be looking at a new type of GPS module. This is a GPS RTK module. We'll talk about what that is. Um, and uh, this is a new product at DigiKey, this nice eval board that's a really good price. So let's talk about what is this thing because it's a little bit uh, different than normal GPS units. So oftentimes you want to add uh, positioning or tracking or orientation to a product or asset tracking or a drone or you know geocaching, you're going to pick up a little GPS module. And these GPS modules like the Neo M8, um, which, uh, you know, or the Sam M8Q, which is uh, one of the recent ones from Ublox. These are so cute. They're like, you know, half an inch on the side. They're like 12 bucks a piece. You can get them in DigiKey on tape and reel. Um, and like uh, many GPSs, well, they're actually GNSSs because it's not just GPS, which is the American system. It also covers like Beidou and uh, GLONASS and the many other, uh, the European Galileo. Um, so these are the modules. They have an antenna built in. They receive time-coded data from satellites and um, when they have three or more satellites sending this time-coded data these little modules can receive those satellite signals and do the math to figure out like triangularize where they are on earth and also the altitude if they have I think four satellites so and there's like you know dozens of satellites in the sky so as long as you have a pretty good view of the sky you can do that triangulation um, but there's one downside, and this is something that people have noticed, is even though GPSs are very inexpensive, they have about 10 foot or 3 meter um, accuracy or precision. Like, even if you're standing still, you're going to see your location jump around within a couple meters because um, the, the timing data just isn't that precise. Now, it's, it's quite precise, like, you know, then 10 feet is really good across the globe. But sometimes you want something more precise. Like, when would you want that? Glad you asked. So here's some uh, situations where you would want higher precision. So you have a drone, and this drone is supposed to be following a person. It needs to stay an exact distance away from them. And you know, th if if the measurement of where it is on Earth jumps around a couple, like up to ten feet, it could just start veering into trees or like smash into a cliff. Um, autonomous driving. Also, you know, your your car when you're doing navigation, you just want to know like. Where in Ohio am I? How do I get to the freeway? How do I get to, you know, my friend's house? But that's different than if the car doesn't have a person in it and has to stay in the exact center of their lane. And if the, you know, the GNSS has some uh, variation to it, you know, the, it, it has more difficulty knowing exactly where it is. It could start uh, thinking that the crosswalk was three feet before it is, or three feet after it is. It could be kind of a bad scene. And this is where you want um, the next generation of GNSS precision and to do that they use RTK right this is this is GNSS RTK and RTK stands for real-time kinematics okay so here's how it works unlike a GNSS module like these little modules that you get that have a little antenna and they just listen to three or four satellites and they do the calculation um, with RTK you it's a little bit more complicated what you do basically is you still have two GNSS GPS modules, but they have, in addition to just being able to receive and triangulate the location, they can also determine the phase of the signal being sent from these satellites. So they have like really high precision timing circuitry inside of them that looks at that signal, like coming from space, literally from space, and it figures out what is the phase, like what, when it gets the signal, how, far along in the sine wave of the RF transmission is it and then you have two 
station. So here you can see there's a base station, right? And the base station in general stays fixed. It doesn't move around, although there's situations where it moves around. And then there's like the moving drone and the drone also has a GNSS RTK and they're both receiving the same signal from the satellite. Um, and what they do is they communicate with each other about the phase shift between the two devices. And by doing that, they can actually get down to centimeter precision location and orientation, which is pretty amazing. Um, another common um, use case is, uh, like this is a, a mowing you know, rover, it's a robotic mowing machine, but agricultural, um, you know, they often have uh, robotic harvesters, robotic planters, or other um, robotic agricultural machinery. And again, they want to, they don't want the machinery to veer around, they want to go down and like, get every single you know stock of hay or they want to like make sure that they plant the rows perfectly straight um, and so for agricultural uses um, gnss rtk is also commonly used that's kind of where like, i think the the most popular usage is right now although autonomous driving for like autonomous vehicles and drones are also uh, another two really popular use cases and um so historically, this is, you know, the idea of doing this phase calculation, it's not that new. Um, it's been around for a couple years, but it's always been super, super expensive, um, like thousands of dollars usually to get set up. And so what's really nice about this eval board that's available in DigiKey is it's like under 250 bucks, which is a total bargain considering you're getting like all of this stuff. Um, and, you know, and you get a Wi-Fi module and it's got like Arduino shield compatibility, you get the antennas, you get the cables, and it's like drop in ready to go. And it's like a, you know, it's like a beautiful like six, eight layer board. I don't know, it's like this huge thick PCB uh, with nice big ground traces. And you get a, a grounding antenna um, kind of a disc as well. Um, and instructions on how to use two or more of these to do a, a GNSS RTK setup. So, yeah, um, here's the website. Yeah. Do you want to show the product off, or do you want to take a tour on the website, or like, what do you want to do? Well, let's let's first look at this page, and then we'll go to the overhead, and we'll do a little bit of an unboxing because I got two of these, and I unboxed one. Everybody likes the unboxing. Then unbox the other one. Right. Okay, so here it is. So this is the CO99 F9P application board. Again, these modules they've had these modules for a couple years, but this is a really nice application board. Um, it's got um, there's a couple different versions. Uh, there's one for uh, Asia, one for Europe, and one for um, U.S. Oh, one thing, you're probably wondering, why is there a Wi-Fi module on? Well, remember that these two uh, RTK stations, the rover and the base, have to communicate about that like phase difference between um, themselves and the, the satellite. Well, to do that, you have to send like this data really fast between those two devices. And again, that's, that's separate than the GPS signal. They have to have like a separate network. And so um, they actually talk about it in the, the data sheet for this eval board, um, but Bluetooth Low Energy isn't a really good option. It doesn't have the bandwidth. Um, even Bluetooth 5 apparently is not, it doesn't have the bandwidth. You want about 400 kilobaud. Um, so I think uh, LoRa could be good, um, 2.4 gigahertz. You know, maybe Zigbee, maybe um, a bit proprietary, or Wi-Fi are, are good options. They even suggest uh, Bluetooth Classic, although um, Bluetooth Classic is a little bit tougher. Although Android phones have it, um, it's harder to use on, on other computers and devices. So, uh, because it's being replaced by Bluetooth Low Energy. So, um, I picked up two application boards, and don't forget, you need two, right? You need one rover and one base station. You can have multiple rovers, but you definitely have to have one base station that's sending out to all of the rovers the, the uh, phase change information. So let's take a look at the board itself. And what's interesting is, is like, I don't think there's a microcontroller on this board at all. I think it's when the USB connection actually goes directly to um, the GPS RTK module, which is here. And I think it, ha it has clearly a mech controller inside of it because you can update the firmware and it like does all this mathematics and calculation. Um, there's a, uh, let's see, it's a Odin W20 Wi-Fi module. There's um, a debug interface. Uh, this is a USB hub chip um, because there, this module and this module both have USB. So this just gives you one USB connection and they both show up. Um, 
here you've got the GPS antenna. Uh, there's some buttons, and uh, this is the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth antenna. And on the bottom, there's an um, SD card, I guess, for data logging, and uh, some level shifters, it looks like. Um, and that's it. And some, you know, this power supply over here, and then you know, some communication stuff. But it's really it. It's a very integrated module. So um, you can communicate with this chip with uh, SPI, I squared C, or UART. And um, there's these Arduino e headers. It's not an Arduino. I don't think you can program this like an Arduino. Instead, you could probably plug an Arduino into this um, with wires, or like, you know, if you had the headers pointing down, and then you would use this as a shield uh, to control it. Um, or if there's other sensors and devices that maybe you want to have controlled by the, the built-in microcontroller, you could, could do that as well. Okay, so that's that. And then um, I'll actually do an unboxing so you can see what's in the box. So this is what you get. Okay, so you've got the uh, U-Blocks box. Um, and let's open it up. So you've got the uh, quick start card, so it tells you, you have to download the U-Center software um, to get started. It'll, it'll do all the parsing for you so you can get data in. Um, it'll also tell you how you can hook up an RTK um, connection to other devices. It tells you what it includes, and then uh, there's documentation. Um, so they also give you um, access to this um, like hexagon smart net correction service so i guess it's like a distributed rtk so one thing that's true is you know yes you have to have a, a rover and a base station but um sometimes there's actually base stations in your area that you can use especially like if you're in a, a populous city like you know la or new york um you might be able to actually use a nearby base station that's publicly transmitting this data um, because you know you can share that so i think um this network is probably part of that you can subscribe and that way you don't have to run the base station yourself uh, USB cable uh, like a USB power cable um, Wi-Fi antenna the uh, bunch of jumpers for configuration um, the eval board itself a very nicely built eval board um, this disc is often used, uh, these are used as like, you know, to make a better ground plane for an antenna. I think that's what that's for. And then finally here, there is the antenna. And this is a, like a chunky antenna. I mean, this is like a beast. Um, but this antenna has, I think it's probably both magnetic and has, uh, mounting holes it's an active antenna and this is like pretty nice and um one thing that i noticed when i was reading the the, the dev board uh information is um you know you, there's actually like orientation to how the waveforms are received by this antenna so if you can get them like synchronized with your rover and your base you can get um better results it seems so i'm going to experiment with these two things i just got them yesterday um but considering the module itself is you know like you know, a couple hundred bucks. Getting all this stuff for 250 is really sweet because it's like you get everything you need to get started. And then, of course, if you want to pick up the module itself because you're like, okay, I've done the experimentation. Now I'm ready to develop my drone or my, develop my self-driving car. Um, I think it would be really neat, you know, to have this be an add-on to like a Raspberry Pi or like a NVIDIA Jetson. So when you have these like donkey car type DIY rover, um, races, you, know, you can have a base station and then all the cars can use that information, of course, outside, because this stuff only works outside, um, to do like precision navigation. Okay. And so, uh, there's also a demo video. Yes, let's show play. the video from uBlocks. All right, so let's play that and then we'll uh, take a look at the DigiKey site and the product number and where you can find it in a spiffy short URL on the other side. Okay, we'll be back. We recently announced the ZF Lightning, the multi-band high precision module. And on the train, we have the ZF-19 receiver and the ODIN Bluetooth Wi-Fi module. The Bluetooth Wi-Fi is used to transmit the location data to the user center. You see the location data and the green dots right here. Up here in this corner, you will see exactly 
how accurate the location data is. The 3D accuracy is down just two centimeters, and the 2D accuracy even to one centimeter level. Below in this quadrant, you see the satellite visibility. Here you can see very nicely that there are GPS satellites that are visible, GLONASS, Baidu, and Galileo. And then down here you see basically the, the multiband frequencies that are available. If you want to find out more about this product, you may go on our website, ublocks.com, or contact your sales representative. And here is the DigiKey site where you can get it. Okay, so you are like, I want to experiment with RTK and do it for like 500 bucks, which is, a, you know, again, a really, really small amount of money considering the historical cost of RTK. Well, all you do is go to digikey.com and type in 627-1110-ND, that's the part number, or you can go to the short URL um, or you can go to digikey.com slash new and it's in uh, the new products category as well. And uh, I'd like to see more people use RTK. I think this is a really nifty technology that is finally getting to hobbyist and maker uh, and small scale prototype manufacturing cost levels. So good stuff from Ublox. Nice work. All right. And that's on IONMPN this week. Hi, on MPI.